Hello and welcome to Runkle to the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Bill C-21 has been passed, it's received royal assent, it is now law. And a lot of people have a lot of questions about it, and I'm going to try to answer them. Now, originally I was going to do a big mega video talking about everything that's in Bill C-21. And I've realized that, that would be A, way too long, and probably be over three hours. Uh, it would be very difficult to follow because it would mean a lot of jumping back and forth between Bill C-21 and the bills it modifies, primarily the Criminal Code or the Firearms Act, and that might get a little difficult to follow. And it would also be not as useful to people because a lot of people have specific questions and finding those answers out of a three hour video would not be great. So I'm going to do a series of smaller videos discussing particular issues. And the one we're going to start with is firearm parts and cartridge magazines, because Bill C-21 aims to bring those into a level of control that approaches the level of control that is that exists for firearms in Canada generally. So lots of people have been concerned about this one. There's a lot of information going along around, a lot of misinformation. So let's try to clear this up. One of the major things that Bill C-21 is going to do is it's going to control the transfer of cartridge magazines and firearm parts. And so when we look at what transfer means, transfer is actually quite broad. Transfer means sell, provide, barter, give, lend, rent, send, transport, ship, distribute, or deliver. So that's pretty broad. Um, there are some exceptions in the sense that like mail carriers are allowed to do some of these things in different ways than you can. But for instance, if you want to lend one of these things to your buddies, that becomes a potential issue. So um, I would say that I hope everyone knows what a cartridge magazine is because cartridge magazine was already defined in the law, but we're going to go over it anyway because it's good to have a refresher and a lot of people might have misunderstandings here. If the whole point of this video is to clear up misunderstandings, it's good to be clear. So cartridge magazine means a device or container from which ammunition may be fed into the firing chamber of a firearm. This is important as well because ammunition itself is defined. Ammunition means a cartridge containing a projectile designed to be discharged from a firearm and without restricting the generality of the foregoing includes a caseless cartridge and a shot shell. So why is this important? Well, because there's a bunch of things that are either firearms or firearm-like which don't use ammunition. For instance, an airsoft gun is legally a firearm. It's what we'd call an 84 sub 3 firearm. It doesn't need a firearms license, but the magazine isn't a cartridge magazine because it doesn't contain cartridges. It just uses projectiles. This is true of some other things, uh, the Berna launcher. A lot of you have asked me to do a review or a discussion of that. That's coming. Um, there's a few other things like that, um, nail guns and so forth. So this does include the magazines of most firearms. It doesn't include something like a side saddle would not be a cartridge magazine because you can't feed it into the firing chamber of the firearm with that, unless a court comes to a really bizarre ruling, but I don't see that happening. So that's a cartridge magazine. The next thing we should sort of look at is firearm part, because this is going to control those things. We should know what that means. So firearm part means a barrel for a firearm, a slide for a handgun, and any other prescribed part but does not include, unless otherwise prescribed, a barrel for a firearm or a slide for a handgun if that barrel or slide is designed exclusively for use on a firearm that is deemed under subsection 84 sub 3 not to be a firearm. And those, again, are things like air guns uh, that shoot under 500 feet per second, nail guns and other industrial uh, things, signaling devices like flare guns. That's... Um, sort of what's covered there. All right. Now, what does this end up meaning? Well, um, it starts with a barrel or a slide for a handgun, but they, they have the ability to add through regulations, other things. So some people have said firearm part includes springs. It includes, um, 
not legally under the definition yet. They could add a spring later on. Now, why are they putting this in here? Well, the main reason why they want to control this is because they're concerned about 3D printed firearms. And YouTube, I'm just discussing the law around them in Canada. Please don't yank this just because I used a word you don't like. But uh, they're concerned that people are going to be acquiring uh, critical components for 3D printed firearms, and so they want to restrict that. So, what does Bill C-21 do about these things? Well, the first thing it does is it adds firearm part and cartridge magazine to all of the sections around, um, around when you get a firearm ban, for instance. Um, so if you get banned uh, to, uh, from having guns, like you, uh, because you have a criminal conviction or something along those lines, then you are not going to be able to have firearm parts or cartridge magazines, which currently you can. Like currently, if you sustain a firearm prohibition, perhaps because you were convicted of drug trafficking or something like that, you would still be able to buy cartridge magazines or uh, gun barrels. Not a full gun, but a gun barrel, for instance. Um, so this sort of closes that up. Um, it also allows for a lot more, um, if they're searching, they can seize more things. Um, but that's not the main thing that's got people concerned. That is uh, this bit, and I'll just pull this up. Uh, authorization to transfer cartridge magazine to individuals and authorization to transfer firearm parts. So a person may transfer a cartridge magazine that is not prescribed to be a prohibited device, only if the individual holds a license authorizing him or her to possess firearms and a person may transfer a firearm part to an individual only if the individual holds a license authorizing them to possess firearms. So um, the first question people have had is, is this in effect now? And the answer to that is no, as of the recording of this video, it might actually change between me recording it and me posting it. Um, these things will come into effect via an order in council, which can be brought at any time. But we don't know exactly when that'll be. Um, it might just be that there's an announcement and then it's done. So um, we don't know is the simple answer, but um, a lot of people have said it's already in effect. No, but keep, uh, keep your ears peeled for when this changes because this could affect you. Now, you'll note that the wording, the wording is weird, pardon me. Uh, a person may transfer a firearm part to an individual only if the individual holds a license. The reason for that wording differentiating person and individual is to make it clear who has to have the license. The person who's receiving the item has to have a license. And one question people have asked is, wait, what, what does this mean about they have to have a license? particularly because we've seen um, new changes to the gun laws that have required this process where you have to go and call in and verify and get a, uh, you know, a, a, a number to confirm that you called in and verified the license and that big process. And they're saying, am I going to have to do that for magazines? Am I going to have to do that for gun barrels? What's required? And the answer to this is... No, at least not right now. Right now, it doesn't specify how you have to check. It's just they have to have a firearms license. So you should definitely check that. There would be a, a burden on you to make sure that you've done that. Um, you can't just be reckless as to it. You can't just be like, eh, I'm sure if the guy's buying a cartridge magazine, he's got to have a gun license, right? You should check that. You should do your diligence on that, but it doesn't actually spell out all of this. And you might be saying, why Why wouldn't they make you do the whole process? Well, um, we already kind of knew that that whole process about calling in to get that verification number was really a sort of backdoor registry method. And they're not really trying to create a backdoor registry for every gun barrel or every cartridge magazine yet. Um, but because of that, uh, because 
they don't need these things in their um in their sort of backdoor registry here um they're not making you do that which is good because um i've borrowed magazines for instance at the range um you're going out to try a new shooting sport and it might mean that you need like six magazines magazines are expensive you may not want to buy six magazines for a shooting sport before you know that you like it um so you end up just being like hey can i can i borrow some mags well now the person will be like sure let's see your license first so this isn't a huge change um there have been a lot of people sort of a little overly nervous about this one um on my list of things that bother me about the bill i mean i think this is unnecessary but it's not going to cause a major huge disruption to my life um it is unnecessary and somewhat intrusive control but it's not going to be a huge thing one thing that will be interesting cartridge magazine is fairly well defined and fairly hashed out um, barrel is going to be really interesting to determine and slide because well um what is a barrel a barrel is fundamentally a tube and one of the problems is that there's several like sizes of pipe or other tubing that can serve as an unrifled barrel for firearms um, in some cases without any further modification i mean it might need to have a, a chamber reamed but there are designs of firearms that just use hardware store pipe are those going to be controlled is home depot going to have to start asking people for firearms licenses i doubt it but there may be some interesting issues around this that come up in niche cases um, this is the kind of thing that keeps a sort of firearms law nerd like me interested because i'm going to be watching for those cases but the average person probably isn't going to have to worry about it so let me know if there's any questions that I didn't address on this topic in the, uh, in the comments below. Also, if there's some part of the bill that you want me to focus on next, let me know. I'll be rolling these out over time, just trying to, uh, trying to clear things up and trying to hopefully create a, a more final version of the answers to a lot of these questions. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting and educational. Uh, please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content. And I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Canada's National Firearms Association, the CCFR, the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, and Lembus for the Elf. At the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Kyle Fox, Drunk All of the Baileys, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. Hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.